ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧಸ್ಯ ಜನಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರುನ್ಮಿಲಿತಂ ತಸ್ಮೀಗುರವೇ ನಮ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರಪ್ರಿಯ ಮೂರ್ತಯ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಬಲ್ಲ ತೀರ್ಥ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ನಾಮಿನ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೂಷಣ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತಂಗಿನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಸದಾಮಯ ದಾತಿ ವಂದೇ ನಂದ ವ್ರಜಸ್ತ್ರೀ ಪದಾರೇನೋ ಮಧುಕ್ಷಣಿತೀತ ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿತಾನ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾಮ್ಯ ಗೌರಭ್ಯಶೇ ನಮ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧೋ ದೀನಬಂಧೋ ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕ ಕಂತ ರಾಧಾ ಕಂತ ನಮೋಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮೀಶ್ವರಿ ಬಿಂದಯಯ ತುಳಸಿ ದೇವಿಯಾಯ ಪ್ರಿಯಯ ಕೇಶವಸ್ತ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರದೇವಿ ಸತ್ಯವತಾಯ ನಮೋ ನಮ First of all, I offer my unlimited prostrated obeisances to the lotus feet of my most revered Shri Guru Maharaj, all my Guru Vargas and all the Vaishnavas, and I beg for their causeless mercy that I may be able to glorify Shri Vrindavan Ram and Raja Bhakti. Hare Krishna, dear devotee, welcome to today's webcast. and we are very fortunate that somehow radharani made perfect arrangements that i came just in time i literally just dropped my bag opened the laptop and just now i arrived in himlitala so i'm very happy that this worked by her blessing and the network seems steady i hope the phone will keep on allowing us to do that and uh, if there is some disturbances kindly forgive me the uh, wifi is not steady here so great yes i started the recording so um tomorrow is guru purnima and we are very fortunate that uh, we are connected to the goswamis through our gurudev prabhu ji your voice is very less acha okay thank is you is that uh, abhimane for is it for my phone or is it less it's it is it is less okay yeah. voice okay i'll try to hold the microphone like this and sorry prabhu ji yeah 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 no problem we have to make adjustments here in in vrindavan everything is <laughs> a little bit connected to tapasya all the time this is tapa bhumi this is the place on earth to do penances to do austerities for the sake of of our own upliftment so because if it's too comfortable then we become lazy and we neglect um, devotional services so it's good that uh, you know radharani makes us always um, you know be in a space where we don't feel 100% materially comfortable so um i hope now it's better yes yes okay great and um i can still hear some background noise so maybe someone can mute some some other person is still okay thank you so what's uh, very 
nice in our tradition is because we're connected to Sanatan Goswami. And so here in Vrindavan, everyone connects with Sri Sanatan Goswami on Guru Purnima. Yeah. So the Samadhi of Sanatan Goswami is just behind here in walkable distance. And actually because tomorrow is, is, is his disappearance day and Sanatan Goswami is accepted as the father of the Brajavasis here because he has given them everything. You know, the, the access to all the intimate pastimes, lilas, the lilas talis, pastime places, and together with the other Goswamis who were younger to him and thus junior to him, they, he has um, published amazing literatures and spread the glories of Vrindavan and Vraja Bhakti across Braj and across the whole planet. Um, through the continuous movement of Sri Chaitanya. And so tomorrow, many Brajavasis, they shave their heads. It's still ongoing, this tradition. So sometimes when we are in Vrindavan, we could be overwhelmed by the, you know, attention that's given to so many other traditions nowadays. Prem Mandir just came up. Before, when, when the people came to Vrindavan, before Prem Mandir was there, they asked, where is the temple? Mandir Kahe. And what they meant was Banka Bihari temple, because that time Banka Bihari was most famous. But nowadays, when they, when they ask Mandir Kahe, many of them mean Prem Mandir. Because although it's a new temple, it was built with so much pomp and you know, marble imported from Italy, which of course is, is ecologically speaking a little disaster, but you know, it looks good. And so in within just one generation, there can be huge shifts in the consciousness and the attention can, you know, be swayed from one very old tradition to a new tradition. But on this day tomorrow, you can still witness how Sanatan Goswami is still today accepted as the father of all the Brajavasis, the spiritual father. And because when the father leaves the body, you have to do mundan, you have to shave, right? So till today, this tradition is there that uh, many Brajavasis, they shave their heads, the, the male Brajavasis, in remembrance of Srila Sanatan Goswami. So whenever you know someone asks you but where can we see the influence of the goswamis in vrindavan this is one way how you can still see it today and you can show others you can tell others about that of course the, the vast literature is still there the legacy is still there all the most of the holy places in vrindavan were discovered by sri chaitanya and his followers and the rajavasis do remember that but uh, Vrajavasis, they connect through festivals. And this is one of the most prominent Gaudiya festivals that is celebrated by many, many Vrajavasis as well. So they directly connect Guru Purnima with Lathanathan Goswami and remember his, his uh, glories on this very day. So this is one speciality of Guru Purnima in relation to Vrindavan that we should always remember and we should offer our pranams to the lotus feet also of Sri Sanatan Goswami who is the eldest among the uh, six Goswamis and who all of them accept as their guru and so we remember him also tomorrow and we beg for his blessing that we may be able to, to serve in, in this lineage of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because it's through the Goswamis only that we have access to the glories of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then again, how do we have access to the six Goswamis? Only through the Guru Vargas, you know, the entire Guru Parampara 
the mercy trickles down, the nectar trickles down and becomes even more and more refined. And when it finally reaches the lotus heart of our Gurudev, then this is a nectar that's more and more crystallized and more and more made suitable for us to be able to actually understand it and to digest that nectar. So you can take inspiration from a mother also, like a child completely depends on the mother's milk in the first year, especially. So similarly, we completely depend on the causeless mercy of Sri Guru, of Guru Dev. And what he does is very similar to what a mother does. A mother, she digests the food that a baby cannot digest and she makes milk from it. And the baby can digest the milk properly and the baby cannot digest any other food except the milk of the mother. So similarly, there is so much knowledge out there that we cannot directly understand and that's very hard for us to digest. And so Gurudev is so merciful that he digests all this divine knowledge and he makes this more suitable nectar for us. And when he gives us this instruction, this Divyavani divine instruction through the oral reception, then we are able to digest it. So Radha Krishna, they send the perfect guru to us, the perfect arrangement. So we get the perfect mother's milk that we can digest. So this is why Sri Guru is accepted as the most merciful manifestation in the entire creation, in all the 14 words, worlds, because others are also very, very merciful, you know. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Mahavadanyaya. He is also the most merciful incarnation of the Lord. And yet it has to be further and further transformed and distilled and churned into var varieties of other nectar that we can then digest it and we can have access to it. It's, it's not just the digestive process, but it's also the availability. Sri Guru is so kind that he brings this nectar to us wherever we are staying. You know, he, he travels, he preaches, he reaches out to us. Although internally he is always craving to just be with Radha Krishna in the eternal pastimes, in the eternal leelas. I, I remember when I was traveling with Guru Maharaj. In the morning time, he would focus as much as possible on the internal sevas. And he was in constant separation. You could feel it. It was so intense. It was like a fire emanating from his, his body that you could actually sense. And sometimes he would express it also, especially if he was in front of his Gurudev, in front of Param Guru Maharaj, in Param Guru Maharaj's Bhajan Kutir in Kolkata, he would every day go and have darshan, bow down, and offer fervent prayers that, you know, please take me back, take me whenever you feel, you know, it's, it's time, because that expression is, is so important, not also, you know, to teach us where we should be going is that ultimately our really like one only and only focus we should develop is also to just want to return and to crave in our heart just to, you know, serve Radha Krishna in their, in, in their eternal pastimes in Vrindavan because Guru is connected. And once you're connected, you're hooked. You, you want nothing else than that. And, uh, you know, there's this pastime with Shla um, Sanatan Goswami, because we should remember some of his amazing pastimes also in regards to Guru Purnima. 
when he was traversing this mountain and there was a um, host and the host was very clearly eager to steal the gold that Sanatana Goswami was, was uh, the, the servant of Sanatana Goswami was still carrying, although Sanatana Goswami had earlier asked the servant to not carry that gold. So then they traversed the mountain and, um, sorry, this was uh, another pastime that was when Sanatan Goswami was in the prison. And in the prison, he had to get out of the prison. So he offered gold to the prison, um, the, the keeper of the prison. But he refused because he knew it was uh, very risky for him to let him go because he may get hanged or whatever by you know his seniors. But then Sanatan Goswami placed the gold right in front of him. And when he saw the gold, he couldn't resist. And so he said, okay, I'll let you go. So Shlabharti Goswami, he explained very beautifully. He connected that to um, how we experience Prema Bhakti is once we actually see the divine pastime, it's so attractive that we cannot possibly resist. And of course, you can say that for everything, even you know, in relation with, with Sri Guru, meeting Guru is, is an experience that is so attractive for, for you know, most of us that it's just not possible to resist. So, so similarly, Sri Guru, because they have seen the gold they had you know they have been in the eternal pastimes they are also presently serving in in the eternal pastime so it's such an attraction that it's very very hard for them actually to resist and it's a huge sacrifice we have to understand this is very important when we talk about guru tattva it's a huge sacrifice on their side daily a daily a constant sacrifice that they are doing to give us these teachings to give us this mother milk that we need to be nourished on our path of bhakti raja bhakti because they just want to be in the eternal pastimes they it's so attractive you know so this pastime with sanatan goswami who who was very of course super intelligent and he knew that if he will show the gold to the prison keeper then he couldn't resist and he would take it so similarly guru what his mission really is is to show us to give us that divine darshan of radha krishna's pastimes so we can also be similarly attracted and we cannot resist anymore and that happens through oral reception mainly yeah that's why hearing from Sri Guru is so important yeah divya jnana hride prakashito divya jnana hride prakashito by the mercy of Sri Guru that divine knowledge will manifest where in the heart in the heart and how through oral reception yeah we should always make the instruction of guru one with our heart one with our desire this is the oneness that we are striving for you know, the monists they want to merge into oneness with everything with god but we want to make our heart's desire one with the instruction the divine instruction of sri guru and so since devotees have asked that we will hear about Upadeshamrita, then we can also connect this to Sri Upadeshamrita because these are 11 verses that are most essential in which Srila Rupa Goswami has condensed this Divya Jnana into 11 verses. And so we'll hear about that and we will pray to Rupa Sanatan 
also that this divine knowledge will sprout in our heart because it's one thing to hear it but it's another thing to then digest it and to let it grow so growing how does the bhakti lata bicha growing it's by continuously watering it with the water of hearing and chanting so chanting is similarly important than hearing but hearing many times we don't have so much opportunity or we neglect it because we're busy but we have to understand that that hearing is really really at least as important as chanting some devotees say it's more important okay because without hearing there is no chanting you have heard the holy name at one point in your name and then only you 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 were able to chant it so similarly we get the deeper understanding we get ruchi we get you know nourishment for our bhakti lata bija through hearing it's it's the first process it's it's in one sense the birthplace of bhakti yeah so shravanam kirtanam it's it's not the other way around first shravanam then kirtanam and guru shri guru is so kind to shower that nectar upon us of kirtanam so that we can do shravanam and by that we can nourish our bhakti lata and this is really the most efficient way to progress of course sadhu sanga sadhu sanga sarva shastrakaya lava matra sadhu sanga sarva siddhi hai by even one moment of association with a pure devotee all siddhis can be achieved Kaviraj Goswami is saying in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So he stresses the importance of sadhu sangha. One moment, by the way, is one sixteenth of a second. So it's a fraction of a section, second. And that fraction of a second of association with Sri Guru, a pure devotee, steeped in the mood of Braj, is enough to give us all perfection. So how incredibly powerful is shri guru we cannot even fathom you know, just a fraction of a second of association and shri guru can capture our hearts in one second because all the shakti of guru is with him guru shakti yeah why is shri guru shri guru because he is endowed with guru shakti he is the embodiment of of nityananda prabhu and through him comes guru shakti and through that guru shakti shri guru is able to instruct us to nourish us and so of course we also remember shri nityananda prabhu shri baladev prabhu we remember all guru tattva on on this very auspicious day we remember radharani who is even the guru for krishna what to speak of us and when we are steeped in raja bhakti then of course she is our ultimate guru and we approach her through lalita and we approach lalita through rupa manjari and rupa manjari we approach through our guru this is the path that has been chalked out by our guru vargas so when we remember the glories of shri guru we remember all the entire family of shri guru manifestation and also in particular that path that has been chalked out for us of shri guru's manifestation and we pray that we may get connected through this particular descendant of nectar because that nectar in in our humble understanding is the most sublime nectar that's available that's achievable in in all of existence so we will hear about why this is so when we start to hear more about the shamrita sharupa goswami which is of course one of the most important basic books to enter on the path way of raja bhakti so really shri guru's mission 
is to establish, uh, you know, our sadhana, our Braja Bhakti sadhana, and to keep on nourishing us. And this is going on for as long as it's required. Yeah. So we don't have to be depressed if one manifestation of Sri Guru is not available to us in terms of vapu, in terms of physical association anymore. Of course, we should be sad. It's natural for us to be sad. And we're all sad that so many exalted devotees are, you know, leaving us. And it's not an easy time right now because there are not so many um, self-effulgent acharyas manifest right now. So definitely it's not an easy time and we should be sad about that. But at the same time, we have to understand that Sri Guru Tattva is called Akanda. Akanda Guru Tattva means that it is unbroken. It is continuously connected and flowing through time and space. And there is no divisions in the sense that Sri Guru is one. Whoever is there, who is a pure devotee in our lineage and in the same mood of our gurus, especially Diksha Guru, they are one in the sense that they are all manifestation of Sri Guru. And then, of course, you can expand that. Sri Guru includes also all pure devotees manifest, you know, right now on, on this, this planet. But this is important when you consider Guru Tattva. You can hear the Brajavasi monkeys having a good time outside right now. So, <laughs> um, Sri Guru is particularly in our lineage is manifest through those devotees who are in the same mood as our Guru Vargas. So Sri Rupa Goswami mentioned that he said Svajatya. Okay. So for someone to really um, fall into the category of, of a Shiksha Guru, which is of course very intimate, it's not something to be taken lightly, then they should be Svajatya. Svajatya means in the same mood. Okay. So we are Rupanugas and this is very very important that we remember this also on, on guru purnima our ultimate or core essential guru ultimately is rupa goswami is sri rupa manjari in the eternal pastimes so you know when we consider someone for our shiksha guru in our lineage we have to be really sure that that he or she is rupa nuga they are followers of of Rupa Goswami. I see people reaching out and it's all right, even if you take the blessings of other Sampradayas, pure devotees, definitely we need everyone's blessings. But if you become more intimate with someone in terms of Shiksha, then you want to make sure that, that they are Rupa Nugas. If you want to follow our lineage, and I'm sure you know all of us would like to continue. In, in this lineage. So why we don't have to be depressed when we maybe have, we, we may have lost the physical association of our um, Diksha Guru or we were not able to take initiation even because it is said that without the presence of a pure devotee, this entire planet cannot function cannot go on okay so this was clearly expressed by Shlagorgavinda Maharaj and just recently I heard that I think it was also Shlabhakti Prakyan Geshev Goswami Maharaj I asked the devotee who um, shared that quote to kindly give me the source of it the reference and then I'm eager to get it so once I have it I can, I can share it with you because it's such a unique expression of a certainty that always at any times there is a pure devotee present 
on this planet. And it's just a question of mercy, Socrates, time, space, and circumstance, circumstances, but also, of course, our desire, you know, we have to have the intense desire to have this association continuously because Guru Tattva is Akhanda. And for those devotees who would like to hear more about this topic of Akhanda Guru Tattva, I can very, very highly recommend you to read the wonderful book by Srila Bhaktivigyan Bharti Goswami Maharaj called My Beloved Masters. And notice the plural, masters with an S in the end. So in this book, he glorifies all the different manifestations of Akhanda Guru Tattva, especially the disciples of Srila Prabhupada. And he makes clear that we have this non-sectarian understanding of how Sri Guru really manifests through so many different embodiments of, of Nityananda Prabhu, of Radharani. And they, you know, the wonderful thing, of course, in, in this book is they are all Rupanuga, so they're all Swajatya, they're all in, in our mood. And so it's, it's really wonderful to understand how he has this wonderful vision of anyone who is Swajatya and a pure devotee in the line of the Rupanugas, they are our gurus. So there are many, many gurus. And so Guru Tattva is a khanda. There are many gurus. And he even said in, in his book, if you read it, it's, it's really astounding. He has accepted many mantras from many different gurus. <laughs> so usually we take only mantra from our Diksha guru, right? And we should not take initiation from anyone else than the Diksha Guru. So, but he makes a very strong point, you know, a little provocative, but is a very, very strong point. Of course, he didn't take the Diksha mantras from, from other devotees than, than his Gurudev, Sri Param Guru Maharaj. But what he says is he received so many amazing instructions and each of these instructions are encapsulating a particular tattva, a particular truth, particularly re related to Vrindavan in a certain way. And this is like a mantra. Yeah, A mantra is a kind of a, um, you can say like a, a, a vehicle by which we can connect to the eternal pastimes in a certain way, okay? And it's, it's made of sound vibration, transcendental sound vibration. So every mantra has a particular truth that it encapsulates. And when we take association of different manifestations of Guru Tattva, we have to be very alert. What is the Visheshatva? What is the speciality of this kind of particular mani manifestation of Guru? And we have to accept that in our heart. And so Shri Bharti Maharaj, he explains how this is like a mantra that he accepted from each and every one of these transcendental manifestations of, of Nityananda Prabhu, of Radharani. So it's a very, very beautiful vision or darshan that he is giving us. When we approach any manifestation of Sri Guru, or maybe potential manifestation of Sri Guru, maybe we are not sure yet, then from the very beginning, we should have this beautiful darshan. Okay, here is, or here is most likely, a manifestation of Akhanda Guru Tattva. And what is the special nectar that this manifestation wants to give us to nourish our bhaktilata? And then try to digest that properly and make it one with your heart. And then have that shakti, that, that guru shakti, nourish our bhaktilata bija in a very, very particular way. So Vraja Bhakti is very particular like we have been discussing. 
for many, many um, times now. And instruction is also very, very particular. And so that Divya Gyan that manifests in our heart is very individual, very particular. And it may also be that you may receive one particular instruction from a particular manifestation of Sri Guru. And then another devotee comes and that devotee may receive a different instruction because according to our bhav, Krishna reciprocates. Yeah? He says in the Gita, according to our surrender, you know, he reciprocates. But, you know, surrender is not just different in terms of intensity, but also in terms of variety, in terms of our own bhav. So accordingly, and this also Krishna Das Kaviraj Swami explains beautifully in Chaitanya Charitamrita. According to our bhav, Krishna manifests a particular type of form. This is even mentioned also in, in the Bhagavatam. There's, there's a beautiful shloka and this, that we can look into another time. It's, it's enough, you know, for, for many webinars that only that one shloka, that particular shloka is, is so beautiful because how Divyagyana Hrida Prokasita ultimately means that Krishna himself manifests in our heart. Krishna says that, you know, he comes and takes his seat on the lotus flower of our heart. Yeah? He comes and how, according to uh, the very, very particular bhav that we emanate. It's like there are so many different types of nectar that attracts different types of honeybees. So similarly, Krishna assumes different forms according to different types of bhavas we have. And one of the most important services that Guru does for us, actually, we try to serve Guru, but the truth is he is serving us much, much more. We cannot ever you know, pay back that debt. We are eternally indebted to the Sri Guru. So one of the most important ways that Sri Guru is serving us is that he indicates or manifests or nourishes our bhav, that very particular nectar that then attracts a very particular type of manifestation of, of Krishna. And of course, correlated to that, Form of Krishna, also of the divine pastimes with Radharani and our Guru Vargas in a very particular way. So remember, Raja Bhakti is a very, very particular. It's very individual, very, very personal. And Sri Guru is here in so many ways because we need to have this very, very individual, personal, particular nourishment on our path, especially of Raja Bhakti. It's, it's so important that we, we have very, very um, clear and particular personal nourishment by these wonderful manifestations of, of Sri Guru. So we remember today, because tomorrow is, is Guru Purnima, we prepare for the beautiful festival tomorrow that Sri Guru is the most merciful manifestation that Krishna is giving us in all the world. And so it's, it's a huge festival, a festival of joy tomorrow. And we are forever indebted to all manifestations of Sri Guru. We remember and celebrate our own Guru, Diksha Guru, our Shiksha Gurus, our Guru Vargas, all manifestations of our Akanda Guru Tattva in our lineage. Yeah, in our um, lineage, especially Rupa Raghunath, they're very, very dear to us, most essential manifestation of Guru Tattva in, in this sense. So it's um, the yeah, auspicious time also to start Upadeshamrita. Yes, Sri Guru has also planted that desire in, into your heart. 
and, and everything that happens to us, we should also relate to Sri Guru. A desire doesn't just come from nowhere into your heart. We should always remember that if you have spiritual desires, then it's very likely that Sri Guru actually put them there. And especially if things fall in place, this is a very auspicious sign that Guru is making the perfect arrangements for us to get that particular nourishment. So don't um, be shy to desire because without desire, there is no result on the path of Braja Bhakti, zero. And the only real mission of, of Sri Guru ultimately is to make sure that we have this desire, this lolium, this, it's not just the desire, it's intense greed. It's the most intense manifestation of desire we can possibly fathom because that's the only ticket to Vrindavan. Yeah. Tatra lolium api mulium ekalam, Shila Rupa Goswami says. The only price to enter into this path of Raja Bhakti, Raganuga Bhakti is lolium, nothing else. So we should focus on our desires and have more and more and more and more sublime spiritual desires. And when spiritual desires come, we need to nourish them. Very important. This is something that Sri Guru is giving us. And now he's looking, okay, I gave you a flower. Are you taking care of it? Are you watering it, etc., etc.? What are you doing with it? Yeah. So that's why spiritual desire is most important on, on our path. And Sri Guru is the most merciful manifestation that is available to us of the divine reality. So it, it's the most auspicious festival tomorrow. And I'm very, very happy that somehow or other we are able to have this webinar because the line is really bad, but by the mercy of Sri Shigura and Goranga, everything really worked out just in time. And I, I can see that, you know, the entire transmission went well. So, you know, again, this, this is a perfect arrangement of Sri Shiguru and Goranga, although the, the circumstances were not so favorable, but where there is a will, there is a way. The saying is there. Where we have very strong desire, Sri Guru definitely will make arrangements. That, that is for sure. So our real mission is that by the mercy of Sri Guru, we increase our desire and we make it more and more sublime, more and more particular in relation to Raja Bhakti. And we're so fortunate that we have taken this initiation or, or shiksha in this lineage of Rupa and Sanatana. Very, very fortunate. Jai Shishi Guru Varanga Radha Krishna Jai Guru Purnima Adivasi ki ki jai, Sri Vrindavan Dham ki jai, Samagora Bhakta Vrindu ki jai, Apna Apna Guru Maharaj ki jai, Vantakalpa Taru Vashtra Kripadam Bhakta Vrindam Bhavan Jyo Vaishnavish Jyo Thank you so much Prabhuji. It was such a beautiful Harikatha. Very, very nice. I really enjoyed it thoroughly. Very, very nice. And uh, as you said that Guru Tattva is Akhanda, na? Guru is one. So I was even discussing to Tanu yesterday, like um, when I listened to Baba, Vinod Bihari Das Baba Ji Maharaj, I developed more love for my Gurudev. More love, more love. Listening to Baba, developing the love for Gurudev. Looking at Naveen Krishna Prabhu, you know, it's too much love for him. Looking at Bhakti of Tirath Maharaj picture, tears comes to my eyes. So what does it mean? I can't discriminate anyone, na? that who is higher and who is lower and whom I love more and whom I love less. So this is the evidence today, you know, which you 
you know gave that guru tattva is akhanda so you know it's just your connection with whom you get connected you know and then they you see everyone equal you know because that's what i say always that whenever i listen to baba i just develop so much love for gurudev and i cry for gurudev and i just miss gurudev so much and then i navin krishna prabhu also i love him so much then bhakti balav tirth maharaj i love him so much na so guru guru tattva is akhanda very very nice hari katha prabhu very very i'm so thankful to you prabhu that you just you know accept this service for us to do this i'm so thankful to you thank you so much very beautiful thank you for sharing didi wonderful experience and yeah. yes in fact this is an important test if we you know have new association of manifestation of guru tattva if this association makes our you know bond with our diksha guru stronger then we can understand that this is the way to go yes so very beautiful experience i know many devotees who had similar experiences and this is this is the thing that we should look for and it's very yeah. wonderful that, that you have such experience i'm happy for you hari bol anybody would like to ask some question to prabhu ji um i want to just to ask regarding the uh, Sanatana Goswami is is the one that you say did you say consider a father with the Braja Basis? Is is he is this one that the um developed the Sambanda? Can you explain about this? Because I know Sanatana Goswami is like a I remember that I read something that this more represents Sambanda with Guru. Sanatana Goswami. Yes, yes, know. yes. Okay, okay, right. Yes, Sambanda, Abhideya, and Prayojan, like who is embodying mm. those tattvas in, in, in Sri Guru, you mean? Yes. Okay, so yes, you're right. Sanatana Goswami, he is accepted like the father, you know, as the father of the Goswamis, as our own father. So, you know, he establishes the basic knowledge, Sambanda tattva, yeah, Sambanda gyan, okay? So Sambandagyan, there is the Sanatan Shiksha, if you want to go through. Um, Srila Prabhupada used to say that everybody must go through Sanatan Shiksha. It's that famous um, instruction that Mahaprabhu gave to Sanatan Goswami. And this is where he asked the famous question. Sanatan Goswami, he, he said, you know, Ke Ami, who am I? So... You know, he said that, you know, people consider me an elevated pundit, a very learned scholar, but I don't even know who I am. You know, he took a humble stance like Arjuna in, in the Bhagavad Gita. So he took a humble stance and said, you know, I, I really don't know who I am. Please tell me who I am. And then, of course, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he reveals this Sambandha Tattva through him. So, you know, that Sambandha Gyan, you know, you know, Jivara Swarupa Hoy Krishna Nitya Das. So we are the eternal servant of, of Krishna. Krishna Rata Tashta Shakti Bheda Ved Prakash. And we are a manifestation of Krishna's Tatashta Shakti simultaneously one and different from him. So this is very fundamental because this is like the core of the crystal and from that core the entire rest of the crystal crystallizes around it if you change that core if, if you take another philosophy other than this veda veda tattva the entire crystal takes on a different shape so first we need to know what is at the center of this this tattva and that's given by sanatan goswami so very very important and of course, you know, in, in, if you go through his writings, you go through Brihad Bhagavatam, Rita, etc., you learn everything about Sambandha Gyan, the basic things, and not just basic things. Of course, he goes also into Abhidya and Prayojan, but he focuses on that to make sure that we have this core of the crystal properly installed in our heart. And, and so that's why Shla, 
Sanatana Goswami is so important because without Sambandha Gyan, everything else is shaky. There is no fundament. We cannot move on. We, if we don't know who we are, how can we engage in bhakti? How can we talk about relationship? Yeah. So abhideya means to practice, but what do you practice? You practice to deepen the relationship with Krishna. And first you have to know what is your relationship. Of course, it, it goes beyond than just being Krishna's servant. It's more particular, like you know, we, we were saying, Guru is here to give you a very particular Sambandha Dhyan. And that is an ongoing process. It, it takes a long time to understand who you mm -hmm. really are. And ultimately you get Swarup Siddhi and that's when it only starts. When you, know, when you have Swarup Siddhi, then you know who you are. And then actually the, the, the deeper processes of, of Bhakti only start. You're still a Sadhak, by the way. Many mix that up, but when you, when you attain Swarup Siddhi, you're, you're still a Sadhak. You have not attained, you know, I mean, in one sense, this is, you have attained, you know, you're on the, on the stage of Prema, so you, you, you have attained Sadhya, but you're still doing Sadhana, okay? So that's where things really begin, and we have to be super, super eager to get there, you know, as soon as possible. It may not be possible in, in this life, but let it take a thousand lifetimes, like, you know, um, Mukunda Datta Prabhu, he, he asked, you know, well, how long will it take for me to, to get Krishna Prem? And Danya said, oh, for you, a thousand lifetimes. And he started dancing in ecstasy. Yeah. So it's nothing. A thousand lifetimes is nothing. We've been toiling in this, you know, material world in ignorance for unlimited time. Yeah. We, we, we cannot even imagine, you know, it's said that for all of eternity we've been here already so we've gone through all the life forms already we tasted everything and so now is the time to get this sambandha tattva right so this is sanatana goswami and so yes that's why we we remember him and we pray for him and and don't think okay the sambandha tattva is very uh, basic no it, it's a very very esoteric it, it continuously becomes more and more um, refined as we progress, as we engage simultaneously in, in you know, Abhideya, and we start to understand what is Prayojan, like, you know, Raghunath Das Goswami is the Acharya for Prayojan. So that's why, you know, Raghunath Das Goswami is also important. Okay. So we understand things progressively. Doesn't mean we have to do only, you know, um, Sambandha Gyan for some time and then Abhideya and then Prayoja. No, we get everything more and more and more and they support each other. That's why we, we read all the books um, progressively, but also simultaneously, like you have Bhagavatam in the morning, you have Chaitanya Charitamrita in the evening usually, in, in our Gaudiya Math. And then other Shastras we hear in between as much as we can much as possible. So yes, Sambandha Tattva, Sambandha Gyan, very, very important. Thank you for bringing up this point. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Any, any questions or comments? Mm -hmm. Okay, so next time we will continue and we'll hear from Sugeshamrita and we will see if, if um, I'm yeah. allowed. Prabhuji, if you get a chance, you go to Naveen Krishna Prabhu and the timing is thing. Please, can you call me? I re I'm really missing him. Of course, definitely. Definitely, I'll do that. I'm, Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be so grateful to you. I'll, I'll have his darshan today if uh, Radharani is merciful. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you get a chance, you.